the various agile frameworks and not just one agile right minakshi you can probably put your i see your raised hands but you can put uh, your thought on the chat box because i will not be able to talk to you while i'm talking right so whatever you have please put on the chat box so guys feel free to chat okay be open and feel free to chat i'll be only be able to see your question and answers at the end okay but yes i'll, I'll keep my i'm hoping i'll keep my chats on thank you minakshi all right let's begin why this subject such a such a simple subject uh, 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 i would not say simple but a basic subject or a basic topic today <laughs> i was i was talking about which topic this time i in evening hour that i take it for you i've covered most of the agile topics in fact including the last one where we um spoke you know spoke about the entire value chain uh through the the great principles of agile and the, the probably within a discipline agile the is kind of a certification that getting announced in terms of the value chain certification oh sorry value stream certification i would rather say and uh, based on you no know, last session was primarily based on this so i was thinking that a lot of you might have not come across so many practices do you guys okay let me ask you on a, a quick question on the chat box here and probably feel free to answer my question don't hesitate in numbers how many agile frameworks methodologies methods have you used just give me a number just give me a count Vishal says zero. Thank you, Vishal. No worries. Let's say one. Say one or two. All right, guys. So, uh, okay, only one. Okay, two. All right, Michael says two. Okay okay scrum yeah amazing you know what there are 256 Did you get it no jokes that's the number 256 and if you only know one two or three or heard about it welcome guys to the world of dynamism welcome to the world of flexibility welcome to the world of early value delivery welcome to the world of early reduction of risks and welcome to the world of everything else right so we have a very basic collection of various frameworks not of course 256 for sure but i have got a very high level overview today in next 40 minutes and what i plan to do is based on your interests probably i'll take a detailed one hour session on this evening hours on each of them separately so that you get those who are interested in getting more details like for example extreme programming there are few folks who might have been using extreme as well and the remaining might not have even heard about extreme but as a continuous learner or a lifelong learner right i think there is no uh, no harm in learning some other methods, right? Though Scrum has a 75% of the market capture in the Agile method, I agree. But there are other methods as well. And it, this, will, this, this will give you, this session at least give you an open mind in case your organization is not able to 
implement Scrum for whatever reasons and need to think beyond, okay, then how do we go about it? Are there any specific frameworks, methodologies available? They are, there are, okay. So I'm, I'm going to turn it around today. Uh, and and that's, a, that's a whole thought process for selecting this particular topic for the day. So the agenda is very simple enough. I'm going to introduce a very, you know, globally famous, uh, gender, you know, and generally acceptable, you, you know, used methods. And the most one obviously is the Scrum. Uh, and I'm not going to spend some time, more time on it because most of you heard about Scrum, right? But I would like to spend some time on the remaining ones. There are many, of course. I'm, 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 I'm those who might be thinking about safe, right? But I'm, I'm, I'm restricting myself to the basic methods rather than going to safe or any other scaled uh, frameworks, okay? And not even discipline agile today. Those who are raising the hands, I will not be able to uh, see your hands. So please uh, keep, please put your thoughts on your chat box. Okay. All right. Let's begin. No beginning of what is agile, right? This is the assumption that all you, all of you know agile or at least heard about agile, right? But yeah, without this, like probably I thought I will not be able to do or do justice to you on the eight hour, eight o'clock learning session. So the first and the most widely used framework, which is very well uh, captured uh, in the global market today, is the Scrum. Scrum, the word of, came from the game of rugby, when the team huddles together, Scrum becomes Scrum rugby becomes scrum okay so it's like a sprint right a running 100 meters relay that's a sprint that you use so scrum sprint citrations you'll see this kind of words and keep hearing about it so the scrum methodologies few you know three things that keep you know keep coming to my mind one one of the pillars of scrum transparency which involves giving visibility to those responsible for the outcome. Okay. Uh, transparency also underlines itself in terms of definition of down, in terms of your requirements from the stakeholders. And there has to be something related to the validation check, right? And that has to be transparent to the end users. I'm giving you just one example of transparency. The second value or a pillar rather is the way I think about is inspection. Inspection talks about uh, timely checks of how well the project is progressing towards its goals. Every project is a goal, right? Every endeavor has a goal or targets to meet. So inspection talks about how well the project is. It's a measurement of the progress. And looking for the problematic deviations in identifying the corrective and preventive actions. And the third pillar, and the most important out of the three, is called adaptation. You would have heard this term many, many times. This involves adjusting you, yourself first, and then adjusting the team's processes to minimize the further issues, right, in the project. So three pillars in my mind, transparency, inspection, adaptation. Now with that, the whole process works like this, okay? Uh, I will not get into much of the details, but very high level. These are the roles that you could see. Those who are not aware quite, uh, or those who have uh, you know, probably even gone through it sometime back, a quick recap for them. There are inputs requirements in terms of the user stories. I, I, I'll use certain words in case you are not aware, please go back and 
uh, you know, capture your thoughts. User stories are nothing but a requirements, right? Requirements of the stakeholders which have been taken. Product owner is the interface between the business and the technology team. I'll repeat, is the interface between the business and technology team. What happens is, this is called a bucket. It's like a vertical cylinder, right? Where you don't measure the height, right? It's like uh, virtually endless uh, height for that. And I keep dumping my end user requirements into it. We call it as a product backlog. It could be 100, 500 different requirements at any given point of time. Now, what do I do about, the, about that? I can't deliver everything together, right? To my stakeholders, no, it's not possible. So what I do is, I take up various different you know, releases, right? And what I do is, I have my plan to release the most important features of a product to be developed based on my market survey or based on my sales and marketing team, whatever they would say. So the product owner's responsibility is to prioritize this bucket of 100 requirements, for example, okay? And create a small, small, small divisions, let's say 10 divisions of 10 each probably, right? And push out the first one in terms of development. So the responsibility of the product owner is to do the prioritization and also to ensure that a team, which is a technical team we call scrum team primarily, understands the business aspects of this requirement so that they can carry out the technology aspect of or they can map the business to technology aspects for each of them. Now, since as I said, the hundreds are not going to be, you know, all of a, uh, you know, simultaneously not going to be possible. So the product owner take the first bucket of 10, okay? And probably the team here, right, try and do a due diligence by putting those 10 into something called sprint or iteration backlog. A sprint or an iteration could be anything between one to four weeks. Generally, on an average, two weeks, that's what practically I've seen in my experience. Now, what is a sprint backlog? It is a carved out, the most prioritized, and then next, and then next, right? For example, a couple of weeks. So 10 requirements, first 10 requirements in two weeks, right? And then our team will start deliberating on it. They will start developing on it. And the development testing, development testing, all these things will go through. There are lots of different ways of doing it. And the release, the you know, first release, probably, yeah, you might have a multiple iterations like this. This two week iterations. I'll try to see if the release is really ready. If my outcome of these two weeks can can really be published. If not, I hang on for next two weeks and then end of the first two weeks. I will at the end of the first month. I will push it out or release it to the production or to the end users for them to work out. So this is how the entire so-called scrum process. Now, this was a thought primarily for Agile. Now, having said this, the Agile process was something new, okay? You guys might be, those who have not seen, you guys might be seeing it new, but the thought process was always there in early 1900s. And I keep telling my colleagues always, we hear it as a new. We hear it as probably, uh, you know, oh, this is just came in 1995, but not really. It was that even before 1995, okay? Much before that. And probably by the time I come back to this, um, the another slide, you can think about it, how old it is, and probably you can put your, uh, thoughts on your chats as well, right? How old it is. So while you think, let me move on. I can, I could have really gone about the roles, different roles in terms of product owner, scrum master, the team, the uh, you know, enterprise architect uh, uh, and, and tester and whatnot, right? I would have probably gone, gone to that. Assume that you have a one scrum team having all these roles defined in it. Okay, and of course, there are various four types of ceremonies. Uh, most of them, most of you would have heard about, 
one is a daily stand up second is the sprint demo or iteration demo third is sprint planning at the beginning of the sprint or iteration planning fourth is sprint retrospective that we talked about okay so these are the four different ceremonies but i i i'm going to restrict my conversations only up to this because i have to i my main focus honestly guys were not this my main focus was remaining because you know what whenever i go back go to uh, some sessions or any company for that matter and you know what i hear we use scrum we use scrum we use so then what about others and then i ask how many how many others do you know that was the pain area for the session that was the objective for the session so i am going to directly jump on to the next best okay where the pair programming occur now this is called extreme programming you know what if you guys are so technically aligned okay and you love technical work you love technology okay agile is a world of generics xp is a world of technologists okay if you love technology if you love technical stuff then definitely go you do not want to miss out understanding xp one of the most beautiful i have ever come across and so many new principles have come out out of this guys uh you will not probably not see in agile as well right those kind of a deep dive deep dive principles on extreme apart from pair programming right what is a pair programming nothing but very simple a pair of a developer or a tester going beyond the it you know in any any field across any domain construction domain pharmaceutical domain uh telecom domain uh your hydrocarbons domain power domain power pair remains pair pair of two people right pair of programming in the other domains you say pair of programming in pair of mindsets simple as that two people better than one always in the world of it in the world of software development pair programming typically refers to development and tester or two developers as well at times however the xp okay the life cycle that you could you know see here basically come from their core values first okay and i i before i probably take you through a quick life cycle which is very easy to understand i really need to take to you know talk about this the values it's very easy right to look at the values it's extremely easy to look at the value because we know it the most important challenge is we don't practice it how many of you believe in simplicity okay i just believe in simplicity at least from a perspective of my slide keeping it to this levels right in fact there are too many things to tell you so i had to squeeze in so i don't want to you know include anything else apart from this if this is probably not simplified your end users right can't expect any better from you simplicity this is a value which focuses on reducing complexity when you do a technical development right the it, it's not a it's no brainer to do the coding the major crux is after you've done the coding how can you simplify that for the end user how can you simplify the application for or let's say for a novice developer how can you simplify that reducing the complexity right without extra features for example microsoft excel the i have a such a huge respect for that so many years back somebody developed that great application tell me one thing do you use even more than 20% of the excel features not really right that doesn't mean sir i'm 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 saying that complex uh, tool having said that if i have to rebuild the excel okay today i completely go in xp man first my design will be extremely simple initially okay you never know i use the probably scrum and xp both together and there is no harm in it from a technical perspective i use the xp for my excel I'll only talk about uh, one of the classic values of xp there in terms of waste this is a third value 
which we talked about. So three things in simplicity. One, complexity. Two, extra features. And three, waste. That doesn't mean Excel features are waste. No doubt about it. But the problem is, even the most, most advanced macro programmer probably might not be using more than 50% to be honest, or 60% to be honest. Once you understand macro programming, that's it. You will not you know, need this. Pivot, sorry, pivot is a very simple thing. Right? So I can probably restrict up to those kind of levels. I thought I'll give you a very simple exam, exa, uh, example by this. Second value talks about communication. Do I need to tell you that? Absolutely not. This is absolutely crucial to make sure that all your team members know what is expected from them and what other stakeholders are expecting uh, to be working on. Okay. Uh, the third value is a feedback. And do I do any, I again, whenever there is a communication, there is a feedback, of course, where the team should get an impression of suitability. This is a technical word. I would I might say then the business word suitability to the business purpose. When I say suitability, that means I'm trying to refer to the applicability with respect to the context in which your business operates and asking your developing, uh, asking from you the development. Courage, definitely it takes courage to allow our work to be entirely visible to others. Transparency, as I said in the previous slide, again, transparency take a center stage to be courageous, courageous is an out, to be a courageous is the outcome. In the pair programming, right, the team members share code and often need to make bold simplifications to change the code. It takes time. You, you and I are complex human beings. Our mind directly jumps to some complexities. The challenge is how to create that simple or simple code and more important than that how to share it with others transparency okay so backed up by automated builds and unit tests etc the developer and testers can probably have a you know good amount of confidence around this and the last respect respect is most prominent whenever i talk about simplicity communication feedback courage respect is most prominent where the people work together as a team and everyone is accountable rather than one single person accountable. That, that's anyway a practice that we follow in the world of Jai. Right? So uh, these five values probably can get around some of the practices which we, uh, and I, I'm, I'm, I am not keen to take you into these practices, but a very, I must, I must, highlight about few points at least here and especially the difficult parts where you probably you guys wouldn't have understood okay let me let me try to uh, know explain you those difficult part only okay where you have, wouldn't have heard about those but see basically guys there are two types of planning activity here one the release planning and second is iteration planning. You could have seen here, right? Now, it all it all boils down to a very simple code first, or a complex code that you probably create. Whenever I say code within seconds, right? Probably it's not possible. But these seconds are primarily given to a having code done, pair programming, which probably could be done quickly a uh, unit test the testing on the pair programming could be done in minutes in the parish negotiation could be in hours and so on and so forth in terms of timelines okay that's the cycle having talked about that if i talk about using these practices to do this then the first thing that i can probably explain you which might not have been very uh, heard about is refactoring. I'm not sure if you heard of this word, my favorite as well. This is all about your designs, improving your design, 
this is a process of improving your design of existing code without altering its behavior without altering its behavior or any functionality no crap to be added no new things to be added three factor that means make your design simple so by keeping a design simple you are ensuring that if our designs are efficient enough so that in case in future let's say coming a, a month or two if you have to add a features this is a great base if you look at imobile application for example in the uh, you know iccm mobile application on the on your uh, android or ios look at the simplicity of the design one of the best designs i have ever seen probably same with the hfc bank app as well if you, there's a platform the mobile banking platform is very simple i can port anything to it i can have it's open to any apis correct including the bots of the world okay it's open you're leaving the interface without hex or without security threats okay or minimized security threats having said this it takes it takes a lot of effort courage mindset to do the refactoring because it's not everybody's cup of tea test driven development something which is simple enough you could probably even you know understand it very nicely um this is a critical part of xp what test driven development or tdd says that test first development later right so what happens is uh to ensure that you have a good test coverage so that the problems can be highlighted early in the development you write the test cases first right the acceptance criteria under which the test cases will be running would be created here first based on failure of the test cases are you having that courage enough to fail your test cases deliberately the first go do you if you are a, no if you are a team lead or a, no product lead do you allow your team by any chance to fail in the first go if you are yes good you are in the right place then first instance of my test case scenario is a fail indicate fail test cases that's a crux of this method you allow the test cases to fail so that you can do the programming right thing the first time right thing the first go that's called test driven development i think remaining part you all probably might be quite simple to understand it is a continuous integration one piece i'll take that now take and move to the next one it's nothing but this require bringing the code together frequently and making sure that it compiles together with a small 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 piece of work that you have done and you just check in the codes various different intervals of time and do a integration between them and identify if there are any defects or any, any challenges any errors etc it in fact the objective is to bring forth to the surface the more no more and more problems or more and more defects up front so that you can rebuild the code or you can simplify the design so integration tests can be run uh, manually or automatically so automatically mean, meaning when you are still sleeping right the tool itself will check in your codes right and manual meaning of course you uh, you have to intervene at 3 3 am in the night whenever all the developers have finished you have to probably check in or you finished you have to check in manually okay so with that a very quick thought on the just like your agile or scrum okay a quick life cycle of this and you could really see number of requirements in terms of user stories <laughs> okay we 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 use a called, word called exploration here and the exploration is primarily required to ensure that the designs that you are going to carve out based on the requirements probably are simplified enough in future one second the architecture now in xp as i said technology or technical aspect is you know given a good amount of weightage so 
the enterprise sorry sorry not enterprise architecture but the architecture of the software of the code of the application of the program play, play a very important role here and when i talk about spice it's talking about multiple level of exploration towards the architecture and the testing of it same with the estimation spikes so exploration right and the iteration go hand in glove where you try to do your own research and development your own uh, cycles and identify between two and four which one work the best way right and then you freeze it but of course not taking much of a time and the pair programming within the when, when the actual iteration starts this is just before iterations to ensure that there is nothing called technical debt the third word i am going to use use here so it's not written but p e b t just like your finance debt correct it's a technical debt uh, i can probably talk about half an hour for technical debt and refactoring please go back and write this word down you can probably go and do a research on technical debt those who are interested further in the deep dive otherwise i am anyway planning to have a very deep 45 minute session on xp itself um so this is a generic stuff okay, as i said it will do a develop test continuous integration codes are checked in right there's a collective or a, you know what you call it as one generic database uh, sorry code base where all the codes will be checked in and do a test again with respect to the various levels of the code that you have that you have completed in the cycles and then accept test is are run for it's like a uats that you have heard about customer approval happens and the release goes if easily if you are not ready for a release you do not even cross the wall okay so that's about your xp when i ask you guys to think through the source of a child this is a source of a child this is the origin of a child right surprising to somebody to many of you yeah but this is the word right that we've been using in 1900s onwards it's not and i you know, honestly guys when i heard i was zapped the word of manufacturing Ford assembly line. How can this world of manufacturing introduce a child? I am going to park my thoughts on this right now. I'll let you think. How did that magic happen? I don't know. Figure it out. Though I have got my own research, but of course, uh, I'll let you figure out this. And that's very true. This is the crux. of everything right okay so quick principles on lean those who have not heard about lean l e a n okay so many things articles books etc been written frameworks been written on top of it very simple principles though i don't like waste please eliminate the waste to maximize value Well, that's ultimate credo, right? Your team or any organization would have, right? In the whole value stream, or the first thing, deliver value frequently, right? Effortlessly to your stakeholders. Higher the value, more the satisfaction to stakeholders, more the satisfaction, more the revenue. Of course, it's a chain. So to maximize value, we must either eliminate the best. or practically minimize the weight if theoretically elimination is not possible right waste can be anything there are seven different types of weight i with probably i i i am planning to take a detailed session again 45 minute session only on lean and explain you not only just seven types of waste but all this probably in more detail with your favorite principle of kanban stuck in okay into it which do you really some of you really you know use it in practice so we think about lean agile lean kanban as an application of lean in the world of joy okay so elimination of waste is one thing uh second amplify learning 
when i talk about amplify learning it talks about facilitating the communication early and often getting a feedback as soon as possible and when we learn from the feedbacks we can probably rebuild in the simplest simplistic manner once again that's amplify learning this this is interesting thing i think more most of you probably who who would have heard this or read this first time and you might be wondering no we have to make a real decision come on how come you say as late as possible but there is a method in madness here we call defer your decision so the whole crux of deferring your decision or to decide as late as possible is to ensure that we balance early planning with the decision and commitments right for example this means you're reprioritizing the backlog right up to the moment till the time the work starts that means i reprioritize the backlog absolutely to the source of my development start day use i capture all the requirements till then right and people say sir we don't get the time to get the requirements who says decide as late as possible what's the harm two weeks and we're not going to eat you up but make a quick decision probably in a day day's time next day you start build process or development process this is a crux again of lean eliminate the waste eliminate your you know three days four days etc etc i think remaining you can probably uh understand quite well last one is optimizing the whole probably that's again going back to the integration stuff okay optimizing the whole out of everything so it's like some of the parts obviously the uh the whole system when you look at is obviously more than some of its parts as you would have heard earlier as well right it's going to be more than some of its parts so here we go beyond the individual pieces of the project and look for it how it aligns to your stakeholders expectations or to the organization itself right so these are the some of the lean concepts and these are the some of the types of ways in a lean which probably i'll might talk about uh, you know in my detail session that whenever i talk about detail session but yeah at a high level number of defects right over production waiting time non you are unutilized potential of the human beings or the system itself probably like excel transport mechanism inventory inventory has a obvious inventory carrying cost it's harmful it's not good in fact motion no motion in terms of the effort required to communicate or to move information from one party to another you have a dependency on your boss decision you go to your boss you go to your manager your manager goes to his manager or somebody else in a parallel organization that is a motion takes time okay or motion could be a deliverable moving from one group to another group to another group to third group dependencies between them then extra processing primarily this talks about the extra work that does not add value whatever doesn't add value has to be removed out of the picture okay and i i you know i'm inclined to talk about a great phenomena of your schedule management here very aptly apply here but probably i'll restrict my conversation to this in fact i this is a very simple aspect right more the time you delay more the time you schedule uh no sorry more the time you have in schedule is a very simple principle right that we all have heard the de deliverables will be deferred till the till that time okay the people will make will uh, will have, will take a lot of time rather than completing something in 15 days if it's something possible in 5 days if i push the team to do in 5 days they can still do in 5 days believe me they don't need 50 days it's just that i need aggressive push but rather than pushing in a traditional method it's uh, it's supposed to be you know team who supposed to decide team is the owner here team is the decision maker here and they are supposed to do all this i don't need to guide them only reason you have a team coach or agile coach is only should be ideally one time that's it 
ideally speaking, but you still need a coach here. There's a huge importance of the coach because we don't do it. Come on, guys, let's accept. We don't do it. Either we don't have inclination, we don't have power, we don't know. If you don't know, that is ask. Come on, come to the eight, eight, eight o'clock learning session like this and learn. Right? Simple as that. If you don't have an inclination, you don't have a choice. Either you move ahead, you move out. And I'm a very straightforward person. I keep telling the teams across that if you do not get around this, you will never get around in future. The world of digital only will work on customized lean principles like this, which is going to be more, 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 and one of the things which probably I'll, I'll look at my time and uh, open up for a few and day as well. But something which you all use very well is Kanban, right? Of course, the system which is you know, developed in Toyota called Lean Production System. So Kanban is basically coming out from it. It's like a signboard in Japanese. Okay, Kanban meaning a signboard. Earlier, there used to be a manual signboard years, years back in the world of autom automobile or in the world of assembly line. One group finish, it has a signboard like this. We use a sticky notes, right? They used to use a card, a physical card to show, okay, I've done my work or I've, I've been screwed up. I've not been done my work, etc. Those are called signboards. So that's called Kanban. In fact, if you look at it, it's a very simple. I can have this kind of a five column. I can have even a three column. The simple as to do in progress and done. There's a little more elaborated example in terms of to do, meaning you are, you know, your iteration backlog in progress within WIP. And it's introduced, you know, I do a testing in progress, meaning development. Okay, so I could say development or testing and done with respect to definition of done as a criteria for acceptance to the product owner. And these are number of user stories or requirements in a product backlog. So this could refer to the product backlog. Now, the, one of the best examples of your Kanban, okay, is like when you enter a cinema, let's say you've gone to, uh, you know, one of the classic, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, um, I would rather say a park. And in the park, you have a 3D cinema in the park. Only 20 people are allowed in the cinema, right? What would you do? There are only 20 people. So the concept of flow, 20 people waiting, 20 people in progress, 20 people done, right? Think about my examples with respect to this scenario, and you'll really be able to apply these principles of Kanban. One, visualize the workflow, how the people will enter, where they will wait outside the room. What is the capacity of the hall? So whenever I talk about WIP, every WIP has a capacity, right? I'm, I'm asking the advanced users of Agile here in the room. I'm sure you have heard about Little's Law. Those who are, who are not, don't worry about it. In my detailed session, I explain you what is the detail, you know, Little's Law. Have you, have you known about the capacity of this? Do you know how much can be weighted here, right? And though this is an unlimited bucket. Right within a sprint or iteration, how much can be weighed? Right. So it always talks about having visualized the flow. You limit your working progress because your team member will have a not even you know will have a sorry um, what do you call it as uh, limited capacity to work. You might have only two people in a team, three people in five people in a team. Based on that, you figure out you plan out your flow, right? End to end. And you do not want traffic jam. So what would you do? A very simple, continuous movement of your cars on the highway without waiting. Right? So that's the reason you should limit the working progress. In the traditional world, what we do? Stuff in, stuff in, stuff in. I'm done with my uh, stuff. Move to the next group. I'll finish off my deliverable. Uh, my baby is done. Now you are to your baby. Take over. Now the poor guys who are ahead of you, I mean, sorry, you, you know, coming behind you, poor, poor guys are slow enough. They can't catch up. What do they do? Right? 
so many thoughts in my mind right now in to supply my limit my flow as well so man is the flow okay there's a very interesting term once you measure it the measure the effectiveness of the flow you manage the flow that means move around and there are a lot of great things that you can move around guys you can really do this well in with the sticky notes try it out take a board and do with the sticky notes try it once um the fourth thing is make the process ex policies explicit so that all the team members all the customers sorry all your stakeholders really understand how the team works and there is open collaboration etc and of course the last is continuous improve experimentation method move around experiment move around experiment right try to increase the capacity whenever required and try to move around try to prioritize reprioritize and move around by principle rules of kanban i think would probably pronounce see here okay the primary difference between the scrum and the kanban one on the time part scrum focuses on the iterations kanban right we do not have iterations here but this is just it's a flow in survive iteration iteration could be two weeks but a flow is constant it's a constantly moving in the theater right within a park it's a constant now every 20 minutes 20 people go it's a continuous throughout okay meetings here you have a various type of ceremonies which could have happening here not necessarily it depends really i don't want to waste my time it depends the kanda kanda really believe in a continuous flow continuous integration continuity okay roles accountability various roles here no specific role here you can build your own roles whatever you can redesignate your roles right as as you need iterations as i said this is a iterations based on one two or four weeks it is a continuous flow and predicting is a nice word can i predict something can be done here one week two weeks four weeks i have to you know what if we finish if it's not finished it move to next iteration so based on average velocity within the team which is the productivity of the team and here is based on the you know, the lead time the lead time meaning end to end cycle time i'm sorry end to end time from stakeholder to stakeholder which include the cycle time here as well so i think i have got a few more slides how do it i i'll try try to restrict myself but probably you can take a snap of this slide and think about it try to apply this in a real life principle deep, deep you no know, take a deep before i start my next session sometime on the lean uh, in detail think about it apply this to your real life projects guys you know what seriously when i i tried tried applying this i thought yes it is this is how we unfortunately are geared up today with a huge wip and hence the low throughput right think about this permutation combination of it try and apply to your projects you realize you have a great realization out of it so i think guys i'll probably restrict myself uh, uh, open up a flow for question and answers i've got few more methodologies to probably talk about it's all all you know uh, 10 minutes left but uh, probably very quickly uh just to explain you this ftd it's all about is a very simple method right feature driven it's all about identifying the right feature but features what it's all about feature the primary goals are the features right that's a method it first develop an overall model for the product build your feature list all together and then remaining planning has to happen the team then moves to the design and built that's it right so this is a very simple cycle whereby modeling has been given an initial advantage or early mover advantage you model your entire feature to be developed based on certain requirements based on your uh, stakeholder driven uh, objectives so you define the feature list and then you plan out the various different iterations by itself Okay. there are definitely nice good practices actually on fdd like um um object domain modeling if you may um 
developing by feature individual class ownership yeah class code ownership configuration management and many more right there are a little some more uh, you know what you call it as uh, modeling related aspects around this and this modeling is very old term in the world of software business i used to hear from late 90s uh, and early 2000 this modeling concept okay uh, the the world of rup rational unified uh, uh, so rational unified programming from ibm world where i i i i, I used to uh, learn a lot from the rup and then the entire modeling method uh, kept uh, kept a lot of programmers then busy and this is now implemented in a new style simple as that the last one is i probably skip this last one is dsdm sorry the dynamic system development framework is a very simple framework it was one of the earlier agile methods it started out by quite prescriptive and detailed you know the coverage of the whole project life cycle is a very broad encompassing every aspect of the agile ranging from feasibility to the business case to the implementation even to post project what happens in terms of sustain and support etc okay so some of the principles you know as i look at it focus on your business need because it is a very descriptive method descriptive to impact deliver on time collaborate 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 never compromises on quality build incrementally so incremental is part of it develop iteratively here is the difference build incrementally develop iteratively think about it your spare time and of course communicate 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 right and the, the one important aspect they figure out was a control a control is a word which you wouldn't have heard so far in any of the methodologies a control in terms of the entire life cycle you control the entire outcome not even used until it's a system development uh, projects uh, generally same with the fdd not much used because your features are any which way is driven through scrum methodology most likely nowadays and people use the you know, scrum has got uh, probably because of its one the generic uh, awareness and simplicity of use which it allowed over the period of time it has been taken up well okay